sometimes you run across an album you just have to listen to, no matter how rare or how difficult it is to find out any information about it. And that's this one. So besides Rat with two T's and the Boomtown Rats, I've discovered three other rats of note. These are David Kumenik's Rats, as of Rats' first album. And the Rats, an English group in 1963, whom Mick Ronson was with prior to being with David Bowie, and a garage punk band from Portland, Oregon in 1980, whose album is on the Wiz Eagle label. So, I'm going to get confused here unless I review each rat in his own right, ratifying them approximately and perhaps find out which is the most radical. Let's go first with Mick Ronson's Rats. They are an English rock band from 1963 from Yorkshire, five countries down from Scotland. I said countries, I meant counties. On the North Sea, in 1966, Ronson joined with singer Ben Marshall, bassist Jeff Appleby, and three different drummers. They were in and out. They recorded a single, The Rise and Fall of Bernie Gripplestone, in 1967. It was considered psychedelic and is on the comp Front Room Masters, Fairview Studios, 1966 to 1973. The Rats changed their name to Triacle, but went back to the went back to their tried and true Rats in '69. Ronson played with Michael Chapman on his fully qualified Survivor album in 68 Keith Ched Chessman replaced Ab- Appleby on bass and there were more singles Ronson played on Elton John's Mad Men Across the Water track in 1970 very soon after he would join David Bowie and the rats were not heard from again. But you know, if you see one, there are many more unseen. Let's look at some American rats. In 1980, a garage band formed in Portland, Oregon. Fred Cole, guitar vocalist, and his wife Tootie on bass and vocals, and Rod Rat on drums. It played raw punk with a dash of country western. Their records are out of print collectibles today. And that brings us to the third Rats. This is David Kubinek's band who had been knocking around and writing incredible songs. He was the leader of the World of Oz, a pop psych band who released a highly regarded album on Verum in 1969. He also had a solo album produced by John Cale. The Rats album was a collection of his songs, many of them hauntingly beautiful. The other guys were hired rats to back Kubi and scurried away after the album was released. Rats First in 1974. Here are the songs. One, Turtle Dove. Yes, I would have thought this was T-Rex for sure. Two, L.A. Highway. Maybe a little less sparkly than Mark Boland became. Three, Nose Job. 
think before and after you get one. Four, rolling railroad wagon. It's got a guess who kind of quality to it. Five, queen. And there's no doubt about it, the king is dead and long live the queen. Six, glad that you're not like me. There's harpsichord on this. This makes this prog. Seven, very small child. Mild acoustic ballad. Eight, Oxford Donna. We're a lonesome tonight, oh yeah. Nine, main horse cowboy. Every song is great. And 10, child he died. Timeless music, should have been huge. Turtle Dove was covered by glam rockers, boobs. This kindled interest in Kubi and the Rats. First long player record was released, actually re-released. The Rats might have ridden the glitter wave. They stacked favorable with T-Rex. And Kubi sounded somewhat like Mark Bolin and the sweet but I think he might be better than both and that's high praise because I like both T-Rex and sweet quite a bit one more glam band worth nothing is Iron Virgin perhaps maybe could be Kubi wrote The Muffin Man in the 70s Dave Kubinek's main horse Airline put out an album backed by Dutch millionaire Sam Mysegays, who was also responsible for Supertramp and their emergence into the Prague scene. Kubi had a heart attack and had to slow down. He relocated to Yugoslavia and he was killed in the Serbian-Croatian War. No, he was not in the military. Such tough luck, this guy. What a writer of songs, though. Now, I can't find anything else on YouTube other than what you're seeing right here. And, you know, I just gotta tell you, you got to listen to this whole album from beginning to end and tell me it's not as modern and fresh as the day it was made. For me, listening to this album was like the first time I heard the album, the three albums. By Big Star. Did you hear those? It's kind of like they should have made it big too, right? I don't know. Sometimes things aren't meant to be, I guess. But this guy was meant to be. It just didn't happen. That's why you've never heard of him. Unless you're a real music buff. Are you a real music buff? I am a real music buff wannabe. I'm East Coast Pete. Thanks for being with me on my show without a name.